Alright guys, hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, got a little bit of a different video for you today. Uh, we got an order for a wood spoon off our Etsy store and uh, I'm just going to walk you through the process on how we make them. So for this one, I got a little cut off of a piece of cherry that uh, is, about, is pretty much right length. And when I start out, I just take a, see if I can get that on the, in the frame. I just take a, some circle templates, some straight edges, some French curves, whatever I have. And uh, I just start out. I usually will um, come up with the overall width and find a center line, come off of that and just lay out uh, basically what I want to carve or cut or turn or however we're going to do. Uh, this one's basically going to have a all... Um, I'm gonna hand carve the the bowl of the spoon and the outer uh, the outer profile and then the handle is going to be made on the lathe so I'm gonna uh, put it between centers and turn it and sand it and get it nice and smooth um, so uh, we'll just get into it all right so first thing I do I go ahead and clamp it to the bench so it's good and secure and then I'll, I'll typically what I'll do is I'll take a um, I'll take one of my gouges and I'll go around and I'll Take whichever one mostly uh, most closely fits the profile, and I'll walk that gouge around to rough in the um, the uh, the outer shape of the well the inner I guess <laughs> outer shape of the inside of the bowl, and uh, then I'll go ahead and clear that material. do it for depth. So I got the depth where I want it. Well, close enough anyway because last thing I want to do is once I do the outside edge is uh, have a risk of, of uh, blowing through and turning it into a really little funnel so now I'm just cleaning up these side walls to try to get it steeper because I'm not sure what the customer would uh, would use them for but you know for us we I've got a bunch in the house that I've made that we end up using for like um, spaghetti sauce and things like that so it's Nice to have something that's actually usable, so it's not very big. This is maybe inch and a half wide to two inches wide, by about two and a half to three inches um, tall. This way, this way for the spoon or for the bowl, I should say. 
So these sides, I mean, obviously you can't see them that well, but uh, those are, I guess some, I got a little bit of work to do on the bottom here, but these sides are probably, oh, uh, I would say smooth enough to be around 800, 800 grit, something like that, if I were to start sanding them. So I'll most likely just, uh, just oil it up. Typically I don't sand, I don't sand much where I've run the blade or run the chisels because they're, you know, they keep them pretty sharp and they, uh, they cut the wood so clean that there's just no need for it, which is wonderful. I don't know about you, but I, I hate sanding. Well, I don't mind sanding if I can get a power sander on it. But for something like this, some kind of tedious profile, I can't, uh, I don't have anything to get a sander in there. Power sander in there. Get me out of the way so I can clean up this edge. So I'm not sure how many cuts and edits will be on this, but that probably didn't take more than five minutes maybe 10 of the absolute most and granted I'm not done yet but full I guess from raw stock to a uh, raw stock to a finished hog out hog out to carving doesn't usually take me more than 15 minutes and then on one like this where I can uh, I can use the lathe to do the do the handle it doesn't take long at all to finish it off um, which is wonderful because <laughs> I do enjoy it but uh, yeah, it's nice having having projects that are reasonably quick come out in an evening right for before dinner after dinner something like that and just knock one out always fun I think I might need to put a well, it's got an edge on it this one might need to be a little bit sharper but I think I just have a odd angle where I was trying to use that other gouge oh yeah this is working well the bevel's a little bit steep on this to be hogging out this center It's getting there. Camera's in the way, kind of bump into it once in a while. <laughs> Looks pretty good. It's looking almost done. So for this one, since I'm uh, I'm gonna turn it, I spend a little bit extra time trying to clean up some of these facets. Um, so there's not nearly as many in here. If I was just doing a if I was doing a hand carved uh, handle and um, outside outside profile of the bowl, I would um, I'd probably be, most likely be done. I might take a little bit of sandpaper just to make sure I don't have anything loose. Sometimes up around an edge like this, there'll be a little bit of loose material. Um, but for this one, I'll I'll clean up you know, for all for all of them. <laughs> clean them up as best I can with the gouge, and then uh, I'll go in with some. I'll typically hit them with a, with a really really light sanding, like just maybe a minute or two. Don't spend a lot of time on it. But the, don't well, don't spend a lot of time with the paper. There we go. I think I might call that good. Because the problem is. If I use it, if I use the lathe, I have to um, get this pretty much complete. You know, the outside I do, I'll do freehand. I'll just hold it in my hand and you know do it with a knife or you know maybe with the sander. But uh, typically, I just take a knife and I'll uh, I'll rough out the bandsaw to my line and then I'll uh, take a knife and do the outside edge. But uh, um. Another couple of spots. Finding it hard to think and talk today.
there we go all that good all right we'll get the lathe set up and uh get the handle done all right so before i use a lathe i will take the bandsaw and uh i'll rough in the handle profile it just takes a you know basically it's it's about one by two so i end up taking it down to one by one where i'm going to be doing the turning it just helps uh save some time on the lathe Then after the bandsaw, um, well, first thing I do is I'll find my center mark right after I do my layout and understand, um, I guess, where everything is in relation to each other. Put my center mark on each end, and then uh, after I cut it on the bandsaw, I'll take a screw or whatever, a live center or dead center, whatever, and uh, just punch a punch a uh, small recess into uh, my center marks. And that's what I will use at the lathe to to uh, get ready to turn it. All right, so we're over at the lathe. I already got the uh, I got my stub center in and my live center in, and I just find my mark. Bring my tail stock up. And I find that mark. And then. Give it a little spin, make sure I'm clear of my headstock. Lock my center down. And we're good to go. All right, let me get to, I don't have my gouge in my hand. Get the tool rest set up. Oops. Another spin, make sure I'm good. And a customer asked for a a flare on the end of this handle so that's what he's going to get so i just have a sorby a three eighth inch bowl gouge sweat back grind pretty standard and this i don't know what rpm it is but it's been to work so it's pretty fast i gotta bring that head gotta bring that tool rest up stuck in there, there it is. And that's why I normally try to shut the lathe off to do this because if I'd have tried to do that with it spinning I probably would have blew the <coughs> blew the side out of that bowl that tool rest has got some rust on it Yeah. Little steel wool, clean that right up. And here we go. Stop it a lot to check and see how it's doing. A little bit of a catch there, but that's salvageable. So I usually I'll try to feather in the, the bolt of the handle at this process. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty round. A little bit more clean up, but uh, like I don't know if you saw notice that or not, but I've got this. I've got the gouge t t laid away over on its side, and I'm using that. Uh, um, that side of the flute for a, basically as a skew chisel. Works pretty good, gives you a pretty nice finish. So now I'll start uh, shaping the profile. Customer asked for about a half inch. I'm not going to worry about it being too precise. I'm not going to get a caliper out or anything like that. I'm just going to turn it down to where I think it looks proportionate. Uh, approximately a half inch. He wants a flare on this end, so I'll leave a little bit for, for waist to cut off the tailstock nub and uh, sand that down. But uh, go ahead and get this turned out. That's the end. This will become the end. Let's round this over. 
and then give him a little the flare that he's looking for. I think that'll do it. So now I just have to take this down to down to um, down to size. Just over half. There we go. All that about done. Yeah, it looks real good. Sand that down. It's probably already at. 220 but I'll probably start with 120 just to for good measure come back to about here and I'll got to taper feather that in a little bit more I don't want to get too too crazy to get into the bowl it's pretty good so I'll slow that down pull that out of the way change my mind I'm gonna start at 220 need to clean up that tailstock side the live center I need to take it down a little bit further take it down as far as, I, as far as I'm comfortable that way I can get a good sand on it 320 this Abernet stuff's awesome fills up, give it a flick, it cleans right out. I just don't have it in the in the lower grits. I got it in 320, 400, and 600. And it just it's just real nice to work with. So this is 400. I don't know how much of this I'm going to edit and just go, oh man, never done that. So that's kind of convenient though. Let's see, get that, that edge real easy. 400, where's this? We'll do 600. I think a piece of worn out 600 basically just polishes it at that point and we'll call that good sand it up ready to carve out this uh, carve out the outside of the spin All right, so the inside's done, the handle's done. I just have to clean this up. I'll most likely just shave off as much as I can with the knife. And then I'll uh, hit it with a sander. Because that end should be as smooth as the, uh, smooth as the rest of the handle. I guess one thing I did, I cut the end of it off with the bandsaw. No idea. I showed you that. <laughs> it's been a long day. Well, it's been a long weekend. Unexpected call yesterday pretty much changed my plans. But I had to head into work, take care of some business. But it was taken care of. So, now I'm just start shaving the bowl down. And you know, your fingers are a pretty good gauge. Uh, so I got a, basically a relative thickness at the bottom. I want to try to try to pull that all the way up and around. So I'll be doing this about a 45 degree cut here, and then feeling right there to see pretty much when to stop. <clears throat> Could clean this up on the bandsaw, but that's kind of a cut that's not always pleasant and. 
that's about what I would have done anyway. It was about, what, four passes? Four or five passes. Now I'll start... Start... Uh, start shaping. And nice, pretty sharp. Typically I keep my elbows in and just pull out. And that's about all the further I go. So if it does, you know, it looks like it's getting close, but it's it's relatively... <laughs> relatively safe right about as safe as safe as that can be but the knife isn't coming any I mean that might look close but that's about three inches from my body and it gives me the opportunity to put a fair amount of power into the uh, into the blade so that's pretty good to there typically I don't know. <laughs> Typically, I change everything as every time I do it. <laughs> but uh, a lot of times, I'll try to get one side done. Like, try to get this what I just did. I'll come over here and I'll try to do the same thing. So I'll have that thickness all the way around, and then I'll come work on the front. But you know, sometimes I change that, come up to the front, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Just depends how I'm feeling. But honestly, a long ways from finished, but getting pretty close <clears throat> to the uh, to that profile or that thickness. I mean, so typically I, <clears throat> I'll do a lot of these kind of heavy roughing passes, and then I'll come back in and you know do kind of some minor stuff like that just to clean up the profile especially on one like this where the handle's so smooth and there's no there's no facet marks all the way down um <clears throat> yeah so i'll try to they'll be there but they'll be um you know be be limited i'll say for a normal just a hand normal fully hand carved carved with just just blades some bugs on my leg i'm out in the garage Old garage shop, many of you probably know pretty well. <clears throat> we are trying to uh, get contractors lined up and get everybody everybody in order to build build a um, build a house over at the farm, but. That has been very trying. We're in an area, oh, man. Maybe there will be some facets in the handle. <laughs> We're in an area where there's not a lot of um, pole barn, I'll say barndo type uh, construction. We don't have a lot of people that are, um, that have, well, we don't have really have anybody that are, we have found at least. That has uh, built one, and just kind of discouraging. Cause that's what we're trying to build. Having to go pretty careful here, so I don't cut my handle all up. But uh, hopefully. one of these days we'll find somebody <clears throat> find somebody I guess willing to take on the job the problem that we're finding is that uh, you know I designed a house and I've designed a very specific house and we're not you know I'm not an architect I have an engineering degree but I'm not a structural engineer mechanical engineer I could design it and it may end up, I may end up having to do so, but I don't, uh, I don't really have the time. So I was hoping, really, we were trying <laughs> to find a contractor that would be able to take on that aspect, but we haven't found one yet. 
contractors that we have found basically call up a material supply place like an 84 lumber or Menards or whoever and tell them what they they need like a home that's so many square feet by you know how many bedrooms and how many bathrooms and things like that and then the material supply will quote based on that based on those parameters well I told them that I wanted a barn a pole barn and uh, you know basically the bedrooms were somewhat irrelevant at that point I told them I wanted a pole barn with so many so many uh, uh, so much square feet of living space inside it with the basement and all my wants and desires and uh, they all were I guess surprised four or five guys or groups or pairs or couples whatever you want to call it four or five companies have come out and looked at the site with us and gone over the plans I drew I didn't draw a build plan I just drew an overall um, overall house I guess and uh, they all said yeah yeah we can build it we'll build it just give us some time to look into material and and uh, we'll get back to you thinking that they're material guys you know they're 84 lumbers which <laughs> would simply quote the job for them or be able to lay it out and quote it for them but they did not or have not i should say been quite some time now that I've been waiting on a quote. Ooh, it's getting close there. And, uh, haven't heard anything back. Well, I've heard a couple things back. One or two guys said that they needed to uh, have an engineer, have a build plan, etc., etc. I don't know why that won't pop there. They needed somebody to. <clears throat> give them a more detailed plan than what I gave them so probably gonna have to pay an architect or some sort of engineering fees that I don't really obviously don't want to spend the money on but for my time it might be worth a a little bit. Well, we'll find out what that little bit actually is. This is pretty good. A little bit right here, right in there, a little hump right there. If there's a there's knot. This wood's pretty, pretty clear. I gotta come back and. Take that down like I took this down. I got overall profile. It'll be established pretty good, pretty quick. Get up here into the end grain. It's a little bit more harder to cut through. You just have to change your angle a little bit. Take a lot off that point right there. Try to take advantage of that long grain. <clears throat> Dog saying hi. close on this one huh? I might need to put an edge on this soon but it's still cut pretty good 
Let me try to get into this. So I can get into this without. That's more of a roll, just kind of rolling it with my knuckles there. Small bites. Not a lot of movement. Forearms getting sore because I haven't made a spoon in quite a while. Whew, getting real sore. Sometimes I'll draw it down like that and that'll roll that shaving right out. Don't take much force at all. Put my force downward instead of inward. Helps me not pull it into the handle. If you can see that at all, <laughs> much as it's shaking on me. That's where we're at. I don't know if a camera focuses on that or not. Just getting close. As far as the roughing cuts. A little bit more here. And a little bit more all the way around. <laughs> this side here is pretty good. Mostly right around in here. Ooh. Dogs are something. A lot of material right here. I'm gonna stretch that hand. You got a lot of facets on the outside. <laughs> but I'll come in some finishing passes and trim those all down, blend them in a little better. Big hump right there. As you get closer, you can hear it. I don't know if you can if you can hear that though, but it's. <clears throat> The pitch of the knife going through the wood changes as you as you get into it and you get a kind of a sense hey I might be uh, you might want to check that getting a little bit thin in the skin I think this side here is pretty well done Clean this grain up. I'm going against the grain. It's leaving me a fairly rough surface that I don't like. There we go. Lays down real, real nice if you cut it in the right direction. That's like a squeezing pulling <laughs> motions and what that cut there is I squeeze my knuckles and slide my wrist out and it just just peels it right out a little bit of dings there but that'll clean up pretty easy come around the front here Clean up my bandsaw marks. They're pretty close to on point, so where I wanted it cut. So by the time I clean them up, it'll be right on my right on my line. There's a little point up here on the nose. I got her. That nice and cleaned up. Switch it around and come down the other side.
Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll have to do something here. Some kind of catch on the lathe there and tear out. Shouldn't be a big deal. Bend slow mark right there it needs to come out. Just like that, it's gone. Oh yeah. Alright, come over here, get clean these band saws up, pencil marks up, like this, aiming at my wrist. And what I found with carving, just want your movements to all be short, small, to where you can't, uh, oops, sorry about that, where you can't, uh, you gotta minimize your risk. Minimize your cutting, cutting, cutting yourself, right? So you know, I don't want to have to be able to go that far to cut. I only want to be moving this much. Everything nice and tight, elbows tight, good grip. The knives and blades is sharp as they can be so the force is reduced you don't have to pull as hard push as hard whichever your cut may be much much better off all right let's see what we're going to do with this Take this and I'll just feather that edge down. Down to there. Feather that edge up. Now I come over here and Make that side the same. There we go. Pretty good. Come in here and I'll break that edge just a little bit just because I think it looks better. Break this top edge. That wood that was on the original surface is just it's clean, it just aged. Clean that up a little bit. Don't really want weathered look in our kitchen. At least at least not on the utensils. Get under exposed new wood. Just like that. So basically I'll just get this uh, get this done with the knife and clean up my thicknesses, clean up my facets and uh, Hit it with some, uh, basically it's what we use for cutting boards that we sell. Same oil. I'm not, I don't remember the brand or any other real details about it, but food safe cutting oil, cutting board oil. almost get into some finishing passes it's a little bit thick up here on the nose that's 
looks pretty good. The little bit right here needs to come off. The rest of the way around feels pretty good. I'll take his nose down. Shade. Right here. Tell you what, though. It doesn't take long to move move a little bit of wood with a knife. I got in. I got in a little deep. I got in a lot deep. Not too deep then. Be all right. Yeah, there it is, right there. Tear out there. Pretty good. Almost all of it. Take this edge here. There's a, there's a ridge running right down there. Right here, basically that whole distance. Take some wood off behind it and come up and get it. Feather it all in. Woo, that feels good. Just missed the top of it. I got a mosquito crawling on my leg. Really looking forward to winter. The bugs all die off and go away. Chiggers freeze those things out of here. Be great. I don't know if y'all got chiggers, but whew. I got into them about three times this year it was about as oof, it's just all they're just awful I'll just leave it at that I can't wait to if I meet the Lord I'm gonna get asking what them things is all about I figure there's a reason for them I'm just <laughs> for a life of me I can't understand what it would be <laughs> rather have a thousand mosquito bites on my leg at the same time and get into a chiggers again. Get this nose taken down. I'm getting a blister. Yeah, this is by far the... Uh, Longest and most tedious part of doing one of these spoons because there is no, I mean, if you just want to hit them with a sander, you know, sand them down, but if you want facets and hand cut, then this is about the only way to do it. The good thing is, doing it by hand, it's a lot harder to make a mistake made a lot of stuff on a lathe or I've just blown through it and you had problems because of that just you take so you can take so much material so quickly that one small lapse in judgment and you're you know I mean it can it can blow up on you literally you know blow apart or it can uh, you can just you turn a ball into a funnel real quick and you know if you got use for a lot of funnels and hardwood funnels then uh, I guess that's not a problem but I don't <laughs> I don't have a 
any use for any of them. Or really, really smooth firewood. Lord knows I've made a lot of that in my, my time. I'm just looking down the profile here to see if I'm even or, or if I'm heavy on one side. I'm a little bit heavy over here. I got, my, got some material I can take off. But we're getting close. That's pretty good. Round out this bottom. Took it off. Got a little bit of a shelf. Whew, taking some big old pieces. Just taking off what isn't a spoon, right? We'll leave what is. That looks pretty good there. Those long cuts gave me some pretty smooth edge. Oh, yeah. Just come in here and clean these up. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Look like I can maybe start start my finishing cuts got an even thickness around the nose even thickness around the base then you just blend the basically blend the front to the back front to the sides I guess however you want to think of that I'll start taking some of these larger facets out, making it a little bit smoother. Like I said, mostly because of the handle. Honestly, if the handle wasn't, if the handle would have been hand hand done instead of on the lathe, that'd pretty much almost be done. I hit this with a light sanding. Take off any any high spots or. loose pieces maybe that are that I missed right there's one sometimes I'll take the knife on edge like that and use it like a scraper just to clean off any long flats just do whatever whatever the situation calls for turn it a lot and let the light hit it you know the different facets shine or One there, but I can't get the light to where I can get the knife and see it. Here we go. Pretty good. Come down here. Try to clean up this handle. Where I dinged it. Use that knife like a scraper and <laughs> takes off a really light, light amount of wood, but <laughs> does a pretty good job. <laughs> I'll have to clean that up with some 600 and so it blends in. No <laughs> dogs, man, they keep the critters away. I put chickens in the other night and dogs are going crazy and I had the headlight, had the headlight on my, on my forehead, and shined it over in the trees, and saw some eyeballs looking back at me. Don't know what it was, if it was a coon or a, 
I think it was a coon. Might have been a neighbor's dog. I don't know. But I got the BB gun, threw a couple BBs in the woods, and it went tearing off. More of the sound than anything else. I don't know. I didn't come anywhere close to hitting him. Get some sandpaper. I think we are about done with this one. This is uh, this is 400 grit. I'm starting with. It's by no means a shaping paper, but for what I'm doing, it works out quite well. Cause it's got enough grit that it'll it'll take down the the high spots, but uh, or the ridges, I guess, of where the knife went through. But it'll leave a low spots, and it'll leave enough. It'll leave enough of that high spot that uh, you know you could feel the you could still feel the, the working the hand worked part of it. I think my daughter's getting home. There we go. I'll hit the top. Soften the edge just a little bit. Put down in that bowl. Tired, huh? Yeah. Why? Teacher's not going. No. <laughs> She's been out at the. We have a local, local festival. Every fall and well, early fall, I guess. And she works on the 4-H, and she's been getting up every morning at about 6.30, 6, 6.30, somewhere in that range. And she's been getting out, getting over to the fairgrounds at 6.30, 7 o'clock, and hauling corn. They're, uh, they're cooking corn and selling it to, to people to raise money for... For all their club events. She's pretty beat. <laughs> She's pretty well wore out. Been doing that from uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. About 6.30 to... Uh, tonight was an early night. She just got home and it's uh, 8.30, so... She, uh, she's tired, understandably. She's been working hard. It's good. It's been good for her, I think. So, we're closing in on it. Getting her sanded up, cleaned up, smoothed up. Handle's feeling real good. Final 600 grit. Let me do in there a little more. Get around in the bowl. I'm gonna come down here and get this handle. And that right there. Ready for some oil. Let's go ahead and hit this handle one more time in all different directions. So it feels good and smooth no matter how you grab it. Call that good. 
All right, let's get some oil on her. Other than that, I don't know how well you can see that. Turned out pretty good, pretty clean. Cherry redding up real well after a little bit of time. Look real nice. All right, so this is what we use. It's just a, <clears throat> I guess, Howard's cutting board oil, colorless, airless, tasteless, food grade mineral oil. So basically, just take a Oops, paper towel. Obviously, pretty straightforward. Just seeing where I can work with it. And I just rub it in there. And I'll put on as much as it'll absorb. Um, typically, a lot of times I'll just put it in the bowl with the spoon and then work it around till it penetrates, comes through the outside. But I must be tired or hungry or both because I did not do that this time. Typically, so I'll just put a little in there, work it around the end grain, just soaks it up really, really quick. Give it a second to absorb and just rotate slowly. I don't know how much of that you can see. Camera angle, what it is. But I will turn that around until I get all the edges covered. And that's that. And then I'll just take the rag, take whatever's left, and then take that and go around the spoon again. And that is it. I know I said 15 20 minutes, but that's every bit of an hour, hour, maybe hour and a half. That knife work, it's just slow. There's no way around making this hand done any quicker for me that I can find. So sometimes when you oil it up like that and then you can, the grain pops and you can see areas that you might want to go back and retouch. For me, I think it looks pretty good. I'm not going to be doing any retouching. So I'll just let this sit and dry, harden up, and then we will throw it in the mail and send it off. If you're interested in buying a spoon, want a spoon, just go over to the Etsy page. We'll try to put a put a link somewhere. It's just Amanda's Family Farm um, over on Etsy, and you'll see see some various things that we have up there. Um, that we can make make to order uh, like this one for instance we don't i didn't have one uh customer saw it liked it and the one that was on etsy had a straight handle didn't have this flare at the end <clears throat> i don't have any problem accommodating uh, needs and wants just let us know there it is thanks for watching